What's up, everybody? Microcosmologist here with a video not about trumpet, but about trains. This is a layout overview of a layout that I built in a video game called Rolling Line, where you build model train sets and you can play with them like I'm doing right now in virtual reality. This is a replica of an HO scale layout that I used to have. And where this island sits in the middle of this large lake is where I would sit at my computer, which would normally be right here. And everything you can see right now, I'm going to be using snap turn to turn left and right, by the way, like this. <clears throat> this is the view you'd have when sitting in a railroad room looking at the trains. And you can see we've got two levels. And, you know, it's funny, um, when you build a layout, you think you know everything, you think you've accounted for everything, uh, and then when you're presented with the reality of it in front of you, there's so many things you just weren't thinking of when you designed it. And for me, the thing I wasn't really fully aware of when I built it is just how much hidden track there was going to be. You'll notice that the main line along the bottom here, you can see uh, the other side uh, disappears behind all the scenery. And I essentially decided not to put up all the scenery because it would have meant that I couldn't watch the trains when they disappear, which would be a lot of the time. So where are we? When, when are we? We are in the state of Washington. The year is somewhere between 1948 and 1956. And we're on the main line of the Milwaukee Road and the Northern Pacific. And... Um, that's loosely the time frame. If you're looking at this rolling stock right now, you might say, hey, come on, this is obviously not the 50s. I've got some 70s stuff because of what's available in rolling line. Um, so eventually I'm hoping to change this to upgrade it, to tweak it and really make it my own. Um, but in the meantime, I just wanted to put it out there, show it off uh, and give a sense of what I've built. I'll probably share this with some friends of mine who are into trains and um, this is kind of my vision for what the layout was to become, although I would have never been able to afford this many pine trees in real life. <laughs> so it's way more forested uh, than the model railroad was ever going to be. And um, this, the concept of the layout is we've got a double track main line that flows all around the bottom and it turns around at e either end. And we've got an upper deck. They are connected, although you can't really see the connection from where we're standing right now. Uh, on the upper deck right now, we've got a little Joe and two F units pulling a uh, facsimile of the Olympian Hiawatha. This trestle right here is the center point of the layout, the center piece of the layout. Um, this is a replica of the trestle at Mine Creek in Washington State loosely based it's not a perfect replica or anything if you look up snow um bipolars over snoqualmie by larry fisher it's a piece of railroad art that's the scene that inspired this view right here and in real life when you were standing here right about here you could turn to the left and there was a wall right here and that painting was on the wall bipolars so that when you looked and you saw the painting right here, you could turn back and here would be the scene in Model Railroad. So in Rolling Line, there's uh, a bunch of differences between the HO scale layout that I had uh, and what I've built in Rolling Line. And that's basically just because I realized, well, uh, why not have a little fun with it and take some liberties? Uh, for instance, here, this area where the Milwaukee Road is crossing over in the Northern Pacific, this was just straight double track main line like you've got over on the other side this didn't cross over all nice like this uh, this scene here is actually inspired by uh, a steel truss bridge like this on the real Milwaukee road this is a bike trail now and you can ride your bike over it which i did and um when i did this in real life there just so happened to be a bnsf executive train going along this line so it was a very memorable moment because uh just randomly happened to see that. Like, here's the North Coast Limited. Um, odds of that happening are pretty low, so it was kind of neat. And so you can see that I've got a bunch of trestles. I've got a couple snow sheds. This is one of my snow sheds right here. 
along the shores of, I'm going to totally mispronounce this, Lake Cachellus. Cachellus? I don't know how you say it. There's a rule in Washington State that everything has to have some weird, crazy, wacky name that doesn't exist anywhere else, like Seattle. Have you ever heard of Seattle, Nebraska? No, it's only Washington. Um, so what you're seeing right now, this is, this is what existed um, on my HO scale layout in terms of track plan. Pretty much what you see is, is what I had. And as I said in, in the video game here, I've taken some liberties <clears throat> and done some fun stuff. So let's go over the layout. We'll save the city scene for the end. And I'll just follow the main line. Um, before I get out of this scene, I'll note a couple things. This is the point right here at which the lower deck connects to the upper deck. And so you can see that I had this in real life and um, looks like I, ha I accidentally put a few um, <laughs> shrubs where there shouldn't be. Uh, but this, this track goes up into the background behind the main line where you can see the switcher posed on the, the short trestle over there in the background. We'll see it from the other side later. And it goes all the way around behind the mountains and climbs up all the way past the trestle at Mine Creek, the main centerpiece of the layout, and actually rejoins here. This joins in the upper deck. And all this track plan is, this is exactly as it was in real life, all this stuff right here. <clears throat> Had a whole bunch of switches, and this was all to serve a lumber camp. And so here we've got a model of a lumber camp with, I don't know, a bunch of logs laying around, some tree stumps, and uh, some cabins with loggers to live in, and crane to load them on to the cars. This is a custom livery that I made of some log cars. There's a guy who makes models called the Pain Train, and he did this excellent switcher right here. And one thing that's totally cool about Rolling Line is that not only can you view these trains as if they were tiny miniature models like we are right now, you can also hop right in the cab and drive them. So now I'm inside, well, I was inside, here we go. And, you know, I could speed up or blow the whistle. Sound is muted right now and do whatever I'd like to do. And you can also stand, you know, on the shore and watch it go by. And it's like, it's life size now. And so this is just awesome to hang out and kind of rail fan the railroad and look at the trains and look at the layout you've created. So I'm probably going to view most of the time like this because as you can see, it's really nice. You can, you've got a lot of precision control and you can really maneuver through the layout and look at all the different parts of it. So this is a little area that was inspired um, by the Northern Pacific um, slash BNSF main line right here. And as it goes around, uh, we're following the shore of the lake. Uh, I'm going to go back to human size or full size here. I've got a few things labeled. So I don't know how you pronounce this. Cachellus? Cachellus? It's, I remember it being extremely counterintuitive. Someone told me how to say it. I can't remember. Uh, so a few locations are labeled. We've got the lumber camp up here. And some of you who are up in your Milwaukee Road would already notice we've got a substation. So this is flat-roofed Milwaukee Road substation, pretty much. There's no real fine detail on this building in terms of brick, because there's a lot of distinctive, unique details that you should really have if you want to do it. Do it up right when you model your substation. But in the future for this game, uh, there's going to be a massive modding update, which is going to change the landscape of what's possible. And maybe at that point, we'll have some really awesome Milwaukee Road substations. Kind of posting this layout video now before all that hits. I may post another video in the future showing it after all that stuff has been implemented, because I think it's going to have a drastic effect on what's possible and what you can put in the game. So we've got a lumber camp up there. We've got a coal mine right here. and. I had to put in some clever uh, tiny switches. We got a Y and a curved turnout right here in order to make this runaround possible. Kind of crammed this one in. Uh, and so now I'm getting into the things that are different from real life and, and the rolling line layout. So this coal scene was not here on, on, in real life. It was just, just double track main line straight around, super steep hill. But like I said, why not have some fun? We're gonna add some things in. And of course, um, whoops. 
You can pick anything up, by the way, and anything you want to grab, you can move it around. This is all electrified. I've wired it up for Milwaukee Road electrified operations and actually noticing some imperfections here in my catenary work. Uh, looks like I didn't finish that up before publishing. And also, it maybe is a little inside joke. Um, anything that it looks like abandoned track, this is you know what I was thinking I was going to do before I solidified my plan. Um, we've got a little grade crossing scene right there, a uh, wooden bridge that goes across the main line, and some more curve turnouts here, and some staging for coal cars. These are empty ones as well as a tank car, which can serve the coal mine industry over here. So if you're going to actually operate this for real, you'd be using this uh, road switcher right here, Jeep 9, to, to service these cars and to swap out the full ones for the empty ones. and. Uh, this is kind of cool right here. We've got some custom liveries. These are um, auto racks that are loaded. And behind it, we've got an um, 89 foot trailer flat car, which I've done a custom livery of for the preferred 45 Milwaukee Road train semi trailer intermodal. And this trestle right here uh, is actually based off of the Milwaukee Road crossing over in the Northern Pacific in Eastern Washington. I got halfway. There should be two of those concrete pylons, but again, it's kind of tough to create this without the right shapes. And I said to myself, you know what? There's going to be some huge modding update coming out that's just going to make all this like so much easier to do. I'm just not going to try that hard right now, to be totally honest. <laughs> because all this is going to be way better in the future, in the near future. Um, you'll notice that I uh, added these little um, side platforms here with the fire barrels on them. That's um, for anybody who's into rolling line, that's, uh, you may recognize this piece. It's kind of a I thought, nice usage of that. So to keep going around the map, I'm going to go back to normal human size. Um, we have got a little farm industry right here with some, you know, just variety of random rolling stock really in front of it. We've got a hay field and a big apple orchard here. You can't be in Washington without an apple orchard. And um, I'm really pleased with how the track turned out in this part of the map. So if I back up a little bit and you can really see this uh, from more of a far off vantage point, uh, it's got a really nice flow to it. And to anybody watching this from the rolling line community, um, this is this is what you're trying to do. Have track plans with really nice curves and and flow, and uh, like even right here in in my map, this is an example of what you don't want. You got a nice smooth curve coming in, and then random straight track. A real railroad would never do that. You'd just curve fluidly around from one way to the other, and you'd use curve turnouts like this. So uh, these nice smooth curves. If you're looking for inspiration for your own maps. You know, always look to make these big, flowing, smooth curves with, with custom, probably using custom uh, curve sections and that'll, that'll allow you to do that. I tried to not use catenary everywhere. So you see it's only on one side here just because it gives it more variety. I think it makes it more interesting looking. And then if we continue on, we have an interchange with the Burlington Northern or the Great Northern, whatever time frame you're in. And uh, we've got an interlocking tower here. And um, one of my favorite little details, we got the Milwaukee Road uh, pickup truck right there. And back here, uh, you know, we've got, uh, with our interchange, we have a little yard here, which I should probably fill with cars. And um, up here, this is a kind of a half finished scene almost. Um, we've got w sort of an imitation of the old Milwaukee Road High Line that would be super steep. So before they built all the tunnels through the mountains, they had this super steep, really impractical uh, track work that would go up these really s steep grades in order just to be able to open it up and get trains through. Uh, but once the tunnels are serviceable, you, this is never going to get used again. So this is kind of a a little tribute to that, I guess. And then we've got a locomotive servicing pit, um, a water tower. You'd bring some coal over here if you were going to 
run your Coltrane. Here's a good place to put some. And uh, just moving along, we're going to get into some heavy pine forest scenery. Here comes the North Coast Limited. Uh, I made this livery, by the way. This is all stuff that I created. So let's take a look at it from the side view. Um, F unit A, F unit B, and then just a bunch of coaches, really. But we've also got domes, two of them right there. And we've got Slumber Coach, which is a really distinctive sleeper car that's always present in the North, car, North, North Coast Limited, as well as the Observation with that thick white band in the back. That was uh, Not all of them had that, but there were a few that did. I think that's a cool detail. Uh, so let's keep moving. You may notice that all of my tunnels have a little uh, dark shade on them, which I think is really cool. It's just a translucent black piece. So as soon as something enters the tunnel, it like goes into shadow. It doesn't really do that by default. It kind of should. And I've got a few sections right here where we have, um, I just used a supersized fence to model this, but it's, uh, you know, in, in real railroads, you put this up to guard against rock slides. <clears throat> uh, we've got some densely forested areas here. I used to have some clouds around the mountain simulating fog, but I got rid of that. Uh, this is a little forest fire scene, so the woods burnt down right here. You can see we've got some pine trees. Uh, the trunks are still standing; they're all black. That would be kind of cool to have a little area where the where the woods are starting to regrow from a forest fire that happened in the past. And then here we have uh, our second Milwaukee Road substation. This one's a little more detailed, and I think uh, this one came out better. I should uh, maybe revisit that other one and touch it up a bit because this looks a lot nicer this is the gable roof style so a slanted roof this is uh what you'd find and uh again i'm going to totally say this wrong clay elum clee elum i don't know how you say that however you say that uh this is a city in wa in, in washington I, maybe i should call it a town and uh it's a really cool little spot they had in Milwaukee Road substation. There's a, a depot there. This is actually much bigger than the one in real life. I should maybe make this better. Um, and then as far as operating this layout, someone may who wants to run this in a rolling line will be interested to know. This is your auto reverser. This is your reversing section right here. If you put a train into this tunnel, you're going to reverse it. It's going to come out the other side and go on the other way. So this tunnel has a function as opposed to this one, which is just this is main line one, main line two. So these are just normal travel. This is a special tunnel right here, which sends you around the other way. And here you can see this um, track coming over the low trestle that goes all the way around. This is uh, the connection between the, the lower and the upper deck right here. And this is pretty cool looking, I think, with the four wide catenary here. And just for fun, because we can, we're going to watch this go over this big spectacular trestle here. Like I said, this is really the centerpiece of the layout and the main feature of what's cool in it. And when this rolling line modding update comes out, I kind of hope to replace all these trestle vents with super detailed, really nice, cool looking ones. But I don't know. Part of the appeal of rolling line is that it's low poly. This is kind of intentionally, you know, I'm not going to call it bad graphics, but you know, low res graphics is kind of the idea. So maybe it defeats the point a little bit to update it to super detailed stuff. But um, let's keep going around. Uh, a few other things that I did. I made these liveries too. These are really cool. These uh, late 1940s F units. And yeah, now we're back around to the other side of the layout. And here we are in Seattle. So this is the city scene. And I'll just duck down for a brief second. We've got a big staging yard in here. And this is where you could, you could populate all sorts of, you know, whatever you want to stage. Eventually, I'd like to get rid of all this clutter, this deck work. I, this is just how I built the scenery. I made this platform in order to put this upper deck stuff on but could really get rid of it all so we've got a whole bunch of different switching opportunities here we've got a bunch of industries to serve we've got a huge track going into union station um 
we have team track right here, which is cluttered up with reefers right now. And we've got uh, an industry right here. I was kind of envisioning this as like, I don't know, a box factory or something, something that um, you'd cut down the trees over at the lumber camp. You'd bring them to the lumber mill to turn them into boards and you'd bring them up here to this building here and put lay out some cars on this, this deck right on this um, loading dock right there. And then we've got a few other industries to serve. This is um, <laughs> totally unfinished. I, I had like a chimney hanging in midair right there. Uh, but I was going to build a dock and have another industry to serve right here. This is a um, coaling tower. Bring coal up here for the locomotives. Uh, another couple of random industries. I don't know what they are or something. And then I got crazy with this track plan. This track plan and, and, and through here didn't exist in, in real life, but I really love how this came out. So we've got some street running. This is meant to emulate uh, the city of Renton in Washington, which did have the Milwaukee Road going right down the main street like this. Who, who doesn't love that? And um, I remember seeing some really wild track plans in Model Railroader where they do stuff like this, that they've got this turnout that comes you know, with this really sharp radius and these crazy diamond interchanges back to uh, kind of a, a hidden area. And, and what I've got going on here is a switcher and we've got an icing platform. And so this is a fun little switching puzzle to operate where you want to switch out these four uh, refrigerator cars with different ones. Like you want to get the Land Lakes swapped with the Schlitz. So you can only take two at a time though, because this track is not long enough. So you got to run them around, take two all the way back there, set them out, come back, go back again, get the other two, bring them back. Same thing, and then do the whole thing in reverse when you want to load it up. So it's kind of fun to operate this because you've got all these constraints. Uh, and then we got a locomotive servicing facility right here. This is another kind of uh, random dock industry. And um, another industry back there. I haven't really thought too hard about what these all should be. There's still a lot, obviously a ton um, that you still could do with this layout, even though it's, uh, let's call it, semi-complete <laughs> i did super detail it with all these bushes and shrubs like this um and, and i should also show a close-up of this other snow shed here so this is the other large snow shed which as you can see the main lines just kind of both disappear into that they, they go into this big snow shed and just kind of go into the mountain behind it and um really actually like how all this woods came out here this was kind of rough when i first started doing it but Tossed a bunch of boulders and rocks in there, and it came out pretty good. And um, last but not least, we have got Union Station up here. So if you're running big passenger trains, this is the main destination that they're going to and from. And uh, we've got the Cascadian right here. This is a short Great Northern passenger train. This would really be going to King Street Station in Seattle, but we're just taking a, a little bit of liberty here. Uh, and I did label Seattle on the other side. And we've got a big old Burlington Northern, as well as the Empire Builder hiding down here. I, I was running that before I made my uh, Milwaukee Road passenger cars. And this would be an Olympian Hiawatha with uh, early ob observation before they got their awesome sky top lounge cars. So that's it, that's the layout. Um, let's take a look at it from really far away so you can get kind of a sense of the big picture. Hopefully the video recording worked out on this. Otherwise, I guess I'll have to do it again. We'll see. But I put maybe, I don't know, a lot of hours into this. I'm going to say 70 to 80 maybe to make this whole thing. This is my first layout in rolling line. I'm going to make another one. The next thing I'm going to do is going to be super easy and short. I'm just going to make a diorama. Who cares? Teeny tiny little thing, nothing to it. Something super simple because this was huge and elaborate. And when I first started doing it, I was like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, rough it in and not think too hard about it. Who cares? We're going to make it just a little tribute to my old layout. And then I started doing it and I was like, no, we're going to make this totally awesome and super cool. And uh, I think I... I don't know, loosely succeeded at that goal. Uh, we've got plenty of trees. This is um, with the biome brush. And uh, to any rolling line enthusiasts out there, be careful with that biome brush because 
once you start putting in things like um, you know this all these tiny teeny little pieces of grass like this you are really going to be impacting your performance and it's I don't want to say impossible but pretty much impossible to clean it all up once you've once you've put it out there so you let the uh, genie out of the bottle it's out so careful with that biome brush it's a double-edged sword but yeah this is my layout it's called strawgrass cascades strawgrass is the name of the street i used to live on cascades is the name of the mountain range it's on the steam workshop now uh, i'll put a link in the description to this video if you'd like to check it out you can download this uh, you won't have all these nice custom uh, liveries and custom vehicles that i've got here but most of the things that you see are accessible and can be downloaded and I think it came out pretty well. I'm really pleased with how it is right now, and I'd like to put some more work into it in the future and make it even cooler. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to see more rolling line content like this. Part of the reason I'm making this video is because I want to encourage other people to, who might watch this to say, hey, I can make a, a video like this for my layout. Uh, imperfections and all like <clears throat> I must have fat fingered this in VR you can grab pieces like this and duplicate them and accidentally duplicated a big old girder right here um, and just grab this get it out of here <laughs> and delete that <clears throat> yeah so that's my layout hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching